as we start a new study at this time of Merry Christmas, the season of Christmas, we're going to start Should a Christian Celebrate Christmas? This is not my work. You'll see the uh, credit given to on the title page. This is something that needs to be read. This is something that needs to be heard. This is something that needs to be studied in a Christian life. We need to realize because you know what? This is not written to lost people. This is written to save people who are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And I believe totally that if you do not escape Christmas, you will suffer loss. Now, presently, I've had two men in the ministry completely drop me out of Facebook because I have tried to help them to understand Christian is, Christmas is pagan. I'm going to go through this entire study. How long it does, how long it takes, I don't know. But this is done before the family. I am reading this report that someone else has done. These are not my words. I want my family, and I want you to know what Christmas totally is and why we should pray about not serving a pagan festival. Now we begin. There is no biblical warrant nor precepts for remembrance of the day of Christ's birth as a day of special celebration or a religious celebration. This is not to say that we are shouldn't remember Christ's birth and its significance, but for religious celebration and commemorations. We must have a biblical command and we must be taught of the Word of God. The fact of the matter is that the early church did not celebrate Christ's birth, but yet it is celebrated today in the Laodicean church period. This is the church period I'm most concerned in because this is the period I live in. I'm doing this because I love the brethren. I want you to do right. But such celebration not only came into the church, but it was Christianization, Christianization of pagan rites as Catholicism was made the state religion by Constantine in the 4th century A.D. Since the Word of God does not support the traditions of Christmas, a Christian's conscience ought not and must not be bound. The following outline describes the origin, the beginning, the, the source of Christmas with the association of pagan uh, customs, symbols, and terminology. We're going to discuss the whole thing. And I'm going to bring the truth out to you. And I'm going to qu quote scripture. Have I become your enemy? Because I've told you the truth. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. The most dangerous words to a Christian is, I like it. Details of the scriptures support against celebrating Christmas. Attempts to show that celebrating Christmas violates the spirit of every one of the Ten Commandments. And attempts to demonstrate that celebrating Christmas does not fall in the realm of Christian liberty. And attempts to debunk eight of the major rationalizations Christians put forth to celebrate Christmas. And some of you are going to be angry. And some of you are going to be mad at me. Some of you are going to hate and curse me. Some of you are going to drop out and fall away. You need prayer. When you will, will take up the, this thing that's not even biblical, not even to be found biblical, not even told to do, and fall away to go and follow the ways of God's G-O-D-S, small g. Now, the origin of Christmas. And this is not to be professional. I mean, if I make mistakes or if I lose my point, I'm reading this off the computer. So... I'm doing this with Christian love. A long evolution. 
Christmas customs are an evolution from times long before the Christmas period. And descend from seasonal, pagan, religious, and national practices. Hedged about with legend and tradition. Their seasonal connections with the pagan feast of the winter solstice. Relate them to ancient times when many of the earth's inhabitants were sun worshippers. If you know your Old Testament, that's Baal. You know God's against Baal, but we'll get into all that. I'm not trying to throw this down your throat. I'm trying to show you the truth. And may the truth set you free. Now, after you get this, you're not to go squirming down people's throat because they have a Christmas tree. You're in to love to show them like I'm trying to show you the proof, the truth. And the facts. Let the facts and the truth speak. As the superstitious pagans observed the sun gradually moving south in the heavens and the days growing shorter, they believed the sun was departing never to return. To encourage the sun's return north, to give the winter sun god strength and to bring him back to life again. The sun gods were worshipped with elaborate rituals and ceremonies, including the building of great bonfires and decorating with great evergreen plants, such as have a holly jolly Christmas. That's, that's the word holly. I'm going to add some of my own. I'm going to make this real. Ivy. Ivy, yeah, Ivy. And mistletoe. And making representations of summer birds as house decoration. You need to look at Mark chapter 4 and see what birds represent. As Jesus gives the parable of the sower, and he tells you what the bird is. Or flip you the bird or something. The winter solstice then was the shortest day of the year when the sun seem, seemingly stood still in the southern sky. Observing to slow down the sun's southward movement and it stopped, the heathen believed that their petitions to it had been successful. A time of unrestrained rejoicing broke out. With rivalry, drinking, and gluttonous feasts. And maybe th throwing a pigskin and calling it one day of, of celebration out of 365. I'm sorry. Then when the pagans observed the sun moving toward the north, northward, and a week later were able to determine the days were growing longer. And a new year was proclaimed. Part B. Not among the earliest Christian festivals. Christmas was not among the early festivals of the church. Where are those churches? Revelation 1, 2, 3. You can rule out 3 as what we're in, but Philadelphia, they didn't have this mess. It was not celebrated or observed neither by apostles nor the apostate church. I don't mean that church today that, you know, they're apostate. You cannot find Peter, James, and John. I would love to see Peter come back today and walk in one of these churches and smack you right across the face. I'd be sitting there laughing. Not for at least the first 300 years of church history. 300 years at least. And it has not even shown up. History reveals that about 440 A.D. It's dated. History. What the, what the schools are trying to change. What the world's trying to change. You 
pastor, have not studied church history. You are very ignorant. And your congregation is ignorant. Because if you were not so stupid, you would not be allowing this mess into what you're doing because Jesus and the apostles never did such. Well, there was there's no Sunday school in the Bible, and they didn't do the Sunday school. You know what the Sunday schools are like today, especially for the children with programs, with booklets, and anything but the Bible. I'm going to come visit some of your churches, and after you come out, I want to ask your children about certain characters in the Bible. I'm going to make a note if, the, you, if they know. But history reveals that about 440 A.D., the church at Jerusalem, you'll find that in the book of Acts, commenced the celebration of Christmas. Now, that's not a period. That's a comma. More information to follow. History reveals about 440 AD, the church in Jerusalem commenced in the celebration of Christmas following the lead of Roman Catholicism. It says C-I-C, which we'll get to later. Oh! Christmas comes from Roman Catholicism. It is dated 440 A.D. History tells us. Bible-believing Baptist Christian. Add RCC to your church. It was sufficient for the early Christians that Jesus, their Lord and Savior, had been born. They praised God that Jesus Christ had indeed come in the flesh. That's what we do in our church. I'll read on. The day and the date of his birth had no relevance to them. Because Jesus was no longer physically on the earth. So Jesus wouldn't come into church and rebuke us. He's going to heaven. And while the boss is away, the children are play. Didn't Jesus tell the parable as, as, the, as, the, as the king went away, the servants, you know, when he sent the prophets, killed them, stoned them, sent them away? Yeah. He had to return, excuse me, he had returned to the earth. It was the risen, exalted Christ to whom they looked. And that by faith, not a babe laid in a manger. Let me read that again. The day and time of his birth had no relevance to them. Because Jesus was no longer physically on earth. He had returned to heaven. And it was the risen, exalted Christ to whom they looked. And that by faith, not a babe laid in a manger. So how many churches are going to have a little baby with a 10, 40, 60, or 100 watt light bulb? Price is the light. Jesus Christ is no longer a baby. No longer the Christ child. Wait till you get my report on Santa Claus. But the exalted Lord of all. And he does not somehow return to earth as a baby every year at Christmas time. Though this is the impression, a stay from all appearance of evil, this is the impression given every, excuse me, this is the impression given even in certain hymns sung in Protestant services. Wow. I mean, there's something wrong with the carols? You don't want me getting into We Three Kings now, do you? Part C. 
You're going to ball down. And you're going to fall off and hurt yourself. The role of religion in ancient Rome. Seemingly forgotten is the essential role religion played in the world of ancient Rome. But the Emperor Constantine, Constantine understood. By giving official status to Christianity, he brought eternal peace to the empire. Christians were being persecuted and killed. And Constantine came up, we'll stop killing you if you conform. That's added. By giving official status to Christianity, he brought eternal peace to the empire. A brilliant military commander, yes sir, he also had a genius to recognize that after declaring Christianity a state religion, Constantine forced all the pagans of his empire to be baptized into the Roman church. Wow. State church. Everyone is to be baptized as a Catholic. There was need for true union between paganism and Christianity. Mr. Paganism, will you take Mrs. Christianity to be your loving, lawful wife to death you part? I do. Christianity, will you take paganism to be your awful, loving husband? I do. And their adultery happened. Where the church committed adultery against her waiting husband, the Lord Jesus Christ, for paganism. The corrupt Roman church was full of pagans now. Masquerading as Christians. You ever study Halloween? Never study Christmas with the Santa Claus? Wait, the Santa Claus comes out in my report. All which had to be pacified. That's a big thing you stick in a baby's mouth. What better way than to Christianize the pagan idolatries? Oh, so we have to go get the pagans. They're not coming to the church. They're not being baptized. We've got to do something. We can't go all in the world and preach the gospel. They're not listening. And we're not going to do that as a Roman Catholic church anyway. We stepped aside from the Bible. Thus, the Babylonian mystery religions were introduced by Constantine. Here's a date. Beginning 313 A.D. Babylon mystery religion came into with Constantine in 313 A.D. and established a foothold with the holding of the Council of Nicaea in 325 A.D. The Constantine-led Roman church was more than willing to adapt and adopt pagan practices in order to make Christianity Platable to the heathen. And listen, that's what the churches are doing today. The Bible believing Christian. The Bible churches. The Baptist churches are doing that today. We'll bring anything into the church house to bring the lost in. We'll bring in the drums. We'll bring in the liquor. We'll bring in the rock and roll. We'll bring in the rap. We'll bring in the blue jeans. It's a mess, and we've only done 18 minutes of this report. This report is 26 pages. In Times New Roman font of 13 and a half. We're not done. Constantine used religion as a political tool, totally devoid of any true spirituality well how can you make something Christ how can you do it Christianity when it has no spirituality pagan rituals and idols took on Christian names oh you mean so God changed Abram's name to Abraham he changed Sarai's name to Sarah he changed Peter to, I mean, from Simon to Peter. So we can take these names and we can change them too because God approved. 
Jesus Christ was presented as the Son of Righteousness, Malachi 4.2, replacing the Son God, I'm going to spell it, capital S-O-L, capital I-N-V-I-C-T-U-S. So we took this God so, and forgive me, Invictus, which is a pagan God, and said, you worship so Invictus, well, he's really Jesus Christ. We got to get rid of so Invictus? No, he's Jesus Christ, so you keep him. Ah, so you just add another little dolly on the fireplace mantle. Pagan holidays were reclassified as Christian holidays. Have a jolly, jolly holiday. It's supposed to be holy days from the Roman Catholic Church. Anything but holy. So your word holiday comes from the Roman Catholic Church. Go out in your sign and put Baptist Church RCC. I'm telling you, some of you are going to be mad. and I'm telling you the truth. This is historical fact. You can find it, but you're too lazy. That's why I'm doing it. December 25th was the victory of the sun god. Oh, victory in Jesus. Festival in festival. You ever hear churches have festivals? Festival in a pagan Babylonian world. In the ancient Roman Empire, the celebration can be traced back to the Roman festival Saturnalia. Capital S A T U R N Saturn. With this ring, do you take A L I A? That's one word. I know I made a comment. S-A-T-U-R-N-A-L-I-A. -A. I'm giving you the spelling on somebody so you can go look it up yourself and learn. Which honored Saturn, the harvest god. And Mithras, I like to spell it M-Y, but it's M-I-T-H-R-A-S. Get this, the god of light. Brother Stiley, can I have Christmas lights in my house for Christmas? You, Mathras. Both were celebrated during or shortly after the winter solstice between the 17th and the 23rd of December. To all ancient pagan civilizations, December 25th was the birthday. And all you Christians out there, say, say Jesus, say Jesus, please say Jesus. <laughs> December 25th was the birthday of the gods. G-O-D-S, small g. When you put Jesus Christ on December 25th, you put him as small g-o-d-s, and you don't think you're going to give an answer at the judgment seat of Christ? The time of the year when the days began to lengthen, and man, be, man was blessed by the regeneration of nature. Stole it all in the Bible. The regeneration of, of the nature is when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back and takes the curse off the world for a thousand years. You stole Jesus. You stole. And you Christians out there are so foolish to follow in stolen work. Thou shalt not steal. Moreover, all the December 25th, Babylonian and Roman festivals were characterized by five to seven day celebration periods of unrestrained or orgiastic orgies, rivalry, and licious. Uh, I can never say this word, licitousness. Have you read what, what the flesh, the, the, those things, what the Bible says about those fleshies? I mean, do I mean, you, you, you have orgies? Well, we don't have that part. 
December 25th was pri was particularly important in the cult of Mithras. Mithras. That's the one of the, of the lights, the god of the lights. A popular deity in the old Roman Empire. Robert Myers, a proponent for celebrating Christmas, in his book Celebration says, and I quote, and forgive me as, as I pause, I'm trying, I'm moving down and I got to hit the sound recorder. And I quote, I'm going to have to do some spelling here. And again, this is, let me re-quote his name again so you know, Robert Myers, a proponent for celebrating Christmas in his book Celebrations. Quote, prior to the celebration of Christmas, December 25th in the Roman world was the Naturalist Socialist Invictii. That's capital N A T A L I S. Capital S O L I S. Capital I N V I C T I. The birthday of the unconquerable sun. This feast, which took place just after the winter solstice of the Julian calendar, was in honor of the sun god Mithras. Mithras. Is that name M I T H R A S, the God of the Lights? He's the Sun God. Baal in the Old Testament. Originally a Persian deity whose cult penetrated the Roman world in the first century BC. That means it can be recorded, my friend. Besides the Mithraic, that's that God, influence, other pagan forces were at work. From the, uh, excuse me, from the 17th of December onto the 23rd, Romans celebrated the ancient feast of the Saturnina. That's Saturn with A-L-I-A, -A. we already talked about that. Now he's got three dot dot dots, which means there's things left out. It was commemorative of the golden age of Saturn and the god of sowing and husbandry. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, <laughs> that he shall also reap. Christian, what are you going to reap? In order to make Christianity platable to the heathen, to the heathen, make them like it. Well, that's what the churches are doing today, the Baptist churches. The Roman church, cross off Baptists and just write RCC. Unless you want to repent and get right and put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, 1 John 1, 9, and, and get, your, get your church in sackcloth and ashes like the preaching of Jonah. If you read, read what the Laodicean church is like, how it lies to itself in the Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Well, the Roman church simply took Saturn and Lilla. Whatever. You know, we're not even supposed to mention the names of the gods, the Bible says. Well, if I'm saying it wrong, it's not like this God's going to kill me. In fact, he's going to stand before Jesus Christ and proclaim that Jesus is God. Adopted it into Christianity, and then evidently made, oh excuse me, evidently many of the associated pagan symbols, forms, customs, and traditions were inter, uh, reinter, uh, reinter. It was put into the thing. <laughs> it was Christianized. These symbols, these customs, these forms, and these traditions. In ways acceptable to Christian faith and practice. It was approved by the Roman Catholic Church to put all these pagans and put them all into one bucket. I think it was a town of lead over there. And one of the prophets speak about the two women. They went over to the land of Shinar called Wickedness. You want facts? It says, in fact... In 375 A.D., 
There's a date. The Church of Rome under Pope Julius I merely announced that the birth date of Christ had been discovered to be December 25th. And if you stand in that pulpit and say, we're going to celebrate Christ's birthday on December 25th, you have gotten your charge from Pope Julius the first. I know a church that celebrates birthday of Christmas, I mean, excuse me, birthday of Jesus on December 25th, and you bring gifts, for the church at least. You're under Pope Julius first. And was accepted as such by the, <clears throat> you can't see me, but I'm, I'm moving my little fingers, you know, quotation, the faithful. When Pope Julius said, uh, the first said, Jesus has, has been discovered, Jesus was born on December 25th. Nobody like Stanley Hayward didn't, didn't raise an objection. They clapped and applauded. No one. And if they did, they didn't listen like they didn't listen to Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Isaiah and Peter and James and John. The festival of Saturnalia, I'm getting tired of saying that word, and the birthday of Mathras, oh, we got a marriage here, we've got the rings, Saturn rings, could now be celebrated as the birthday of Christ. Wow. And you know there's a car out there called the Saturn? I want to just buy, mistakenly, how many pastors own a Saturn? The pagans flocked into the Catholic places of worship because they were still able to worship their old gods, but merely under different names. You know, there's flock, there's mega churches today. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because the pagans flocked into the to the uh, uh, the Baptist churches. The pagans flocked into the community churches. The pagans flocked into the the mega churches in place of worship because they were still able to worship their old gods, but merely under different names. It mattered not to them whether they worshipped the Egyptian goddess, mother, and her child under old names, Iris, Isis, Isis, -I -S, and Horus, H-O-R-U-S. That's the mother and the, and, the, and the child of Egypt. You know, Egypt is a type of, type of in the Bible, don't you? You know that they held the Jews in bondage, that God kept telling them to not go back. That Egypt's a type of the world. Or under the names of Virgin Mary and the Christ Child. You need to go back and re-listen re these things on your knees. I'm not doing this to punch you in the face. I'm doing this to prick your hearts to get right. To know the truth. Would you, would you really respect me? If I was walking down the road and I saw your house was in flames, I didn't come in to try to help you and try to get you out, but just walked on my merry way and you died in the flames, would you really appreciate that? First Thessalonians 1, 8 and 10, 5, 12. Paul says to turn from idols. And this is not quoting. You go look up the quotes. Well, the verses are about to turn from idols and not rename them and Christianize them. That's First Thessalonians 8 to 10, 5:22. Roman Catholicism Christmas Day is nothing but baptized. That's in the quotes. Paganism having come along. Much too late to be part of the faith that was once delivered unto the saints in Jude chapter 3. Uh, Jude 3, no chapter. D. Christianization 
of pagan customs, symbols, and terminology. Christianity had to undergo a transformation. I believe the, t the, the cartoon was Transformers change before your eyes. You know, a car that became a robot, and a robot that became a car. How many of you Christians had got your children that toy? So that pagan Rome could convert without giving up its old beliefs and rituals. Oh, I can go to that church because they got the same music I listened to before I went to church. I can go to that church because I can wear the, the clothes I wore before I went to church. The actual effect was to paganize official Christianity. And boy, did it work. Satan has a tool that worked. A compound religion had been manufactured, of which dot 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 Christianity was furnished, and pagan doctrines and rites. The idolatry of the Roman world, though disposed from its ancient preeminence, had by no means been demolished. Instead of this, a pagan nakedness had been covered with the garb of deformed Christianity. And that was a quote from W.E. Vine. Let me put this in quotes again. A quote from W.E. Vine. I'm going to do this again. No. Quote, a compound religion has been manufactured of which dot dot dot. Christianity furnished a nomicultured and paganism, the doctrines and rites. The idolatry of the Roman world, though disposed from its, its ancient preeminence, had by no means been demolished. Instead of this, its pagan nakedness had, come, had been covered with a garb of deformed Christianity. Now this is not just Stiley Hayward. These are actual dates in history and men who, who we, we quoted from a man who liked Christmas. We're quoting religious people. Pagan, okay, we're, we're done with the quote. Pagan customs involve vestments, candles, incense, images, and processions were all incorporated into the church worship and continued today. And we we're at 38 minutes. Let's see. We've got much more. Let's see if we can do one more. Let's see. We're going we're to go 45 minutes. Try that. All right. Number one. You people thought I was just writing this stated fact. I don't care who you are. I'm not afraid. I'm going to serve the Lord. The Lord's going to take care of me. Number one, the blasphemous Christ mass was shortened to Christ mass. Take off the apostrophe S and take off the S and you get Christmas. The Roman Catholic Christ Mass is a special Mass performed in the celebration of Christ's birth. In this Mass, Jesus is considered both the priest and the victim, represented by a Catholic priest who offers him as a sacrifice each time, the Hebrew says, once, the Mass is performed. Each time the Mass is performed means you crucify Christ over and over and over. And, and you say Christmas. When you say Christmas, you are saying the Mass that, that takes Jesus and crucify Him over and over and over. And let's put Christ back into Christmas. You're wrong.
<clears throat> and they offer him this sacrifice. The priest believes he has the power to change the bread and the wine of the communion into Jesus' literal, fre fl literal flesh and blood. That's cannibalism, by the way. Requiring the people to worship these elements as they do God himself. This is obvious, a denial of the gospel, and thereby a false gospel, and redoing of the sacrifice for sins, Hebrews 9, 12, 20, 9, 24 to 26, chapter 10, verse 10, 12, and 14. Yet many who cry out all year long against the blasphemous Catholic system at the ears and in base, Rome's most blasphemous abomination of them all is C H R I S T M A S. And for the sake of time, we're going to stop there. We'll continue however it takes to get this study done. I'm giving you report that's not of my own. I'm giving you scriptures. I'm giving you dates. I'm giving you history. I'm giving quotes by people. If you reject, you're going to stand before God one day. So far, it looks like you're not a Christian. You're a Roman Catholic. You may have been Roman Catholic before you got saved, but if you got saved and your church is involved in this, you never left the church. We'll continue, Lord willing.